In July 2010, Stephen Pettigo, Kevin Barbier, Mark Reddig, Randy Hutto, and Carl McCool, OSCI Corporation Associates, met with Bruce Freeman of the Alabama Department of Environmental Quality. Prior to our meeting, Mr. Freeman contacted the U.S. Navy for verification that they did in fact use OSE-2. The Navy stated to Mr. Freeman that they had used OSE-2 on their decks, in their bilges, and on water spills, successfully for a number of years. Mr. Freeman also reviewed the OSC-2 technical package and was impressed that OSC-2 did not introduce foreign bacteria into the environment and was pleased to read OSC-2 toxicity tests that show OSC-2 is virtually non-toxic. Mr. Freeman then asked for a demonstration. Bring it up. The thing what we're going to yeah. differ is we're not we're not going to break it up into small pieces to make it go into other oh, places. Yeah, the, that's the, the end result of the that's, real hard. that's the one that's other people's doing. Yeah, that's a, it's almost like charcoal. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff we've been finding old off the hard for years, right? Really? Yeah. This it, it's much more asphalt. That's this material. Right. These are asphalt teams. This is uh, the test results I've seen are, are mostly the other waxes. Here the mycelium is uh, constant. You know, it takes a little while to penetrate the molecular structure. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, Especially of this material. Right. We're all that's we're all about doing that. Yeah. So we can break down the surface. Some of these have like plastic that if it's stuck to like uh, that's the paraffin probably from the they have that wax and stuff in some of that old. Well, you don't see that the tar bars aren't even like that. If, you, if it was changing the density to make it heavier, it starts sinking. You see seeing it staying up on the surface of the sand. Yeah, the now, one thing from the test I've seen, uh, this material coming out of the wellhead, very little sulfur in it, so it's, it doesn't have the complications of uh, some of the other things that we have around here. Yeah. But, uh, we tried to meet all the regulatory requirements. And we've gone through every hurdle that we could find. Because we, you know, it doesn't do any good to go out there and be a snake oil salesman. You're not going to last very long. How much odor is associated with the, uh, with the process? You smell the, the sweetness. You with the OSA2? Yeah. Well, once you get out anywhere near water, you get a little uh, dilution, you can't smell it at all. If you smell it more than two minutes after applying, that'll be a long time. Yeah. In fact, you can actually take it on fresh crude oil, and we've done this on the enclosed water ponds that we've cleaned up. Yeah. And 30 minutes after planting, you couldn't smell the oil either. Because we literally do partition the molecule. Right. Yeah, most of those, what we had in there, is gone now, except for the bottles of the rocks. And that's where a lot of our normal stuff that comes up, it's been laying in the ocean floor for years before it gets picked up and moved up on our, of our soil. And marijuana is the stuff that laying on the bottom out there off the continental shelf, it's not coming up on the shelf. It's not, this stuff is not going to climb 3,000 feet up the side of a, a giant sand rock slope. Yeah. The, yeah. Stuff, the stuff that you're going to get is the stuff that the dispersant was on the oil down. and the oil hadn't sunk anything. It's been sitting there and it ends up, a process occurs to it on the way in and it's in shallow water. Exactly. It gets caught in the tidal. Yeah. Shift and it's going to push it up on the, on, on the water. Exactly. This meets the criteria that the state of Alabama is looking for yeah. because it's not adding a superbug. It's it's a simple process. There, there's no magic here. Yeah. Uh, and the know, thing is, we're not going to come. We're not coming up to you and telling you this is magic either. Right. We're telling you we're doing what's going to happen out there. there. We're just helping enhance it. Well, and I like the, the floating aspect. That, that's the, a lot of the things that are out there are simply, mm -hmm. if I go put them on the beaches, all they're going to do is, uh, as the down. tank is, drive it down. Right. I've done this 20 years. We have an impeccable reputation. You can, yeah. you can call anyone in the military, and they've been using us 20 years. And I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you, know, you, don't, you don't get that by accident. No, no litigation. No litigation whatsoever. You know, we'll, we'll tell you, if, if, if there's something we can't do, we'll tell you. That's right.
At the conclusion of the demonstration, Mr. Freeman was so impressed that he stated at the point BP pulls out and stops cleaning up the Gulf, then he would request the use of OSE2 for their beaches, since he has been tasked with making sure the beaches are clean for next year's tourist season. The demonstration shows OSE2's initial actions, which can take a few minutes. However, once the tarballs began breaking up and the hydrocarbons started flaking off, the main tarballs would not sink into the sand. And after several minutes, the particles flaking off the tarballs began floating. And once this occurred, the hydrocarbons would not stick to anything, including the side of the plastic demonstration container. Once Mr. Freeman had seen how OSC2 lifts the oil up, he stated that the state of Alabama would also use OSC2 a distance from the shoreline out in the water on the ocean floor to prevent oil from ever coming onto the sandy beaches. Mr. Freeman was very satisfied with the result of OSC2's ability of being able to start the remediation process on BP's oil with dispersants.